our attention now to ripping wood on the radial arm saw and discover what could go wrong there and how to do it safely. First of all, this saw has two rip positions. It has, if you rotate it to the right, that is called the out rip position and you feed your work in this way. If you rotate it to the left, that's called the in rip position. Let me show you also here on the saw itself, it's labeled, it says blade in rip. And it has a scale on here of how far your saw is away from the fence. Let's talk about blade rotation. We look on here, we see that the blade's rotating this way. We've talked about that already. Now when we were cutting miter cuts, we were actually feeding, the wood was actually being, the saw was actually being pulled this way into it. And it's just the opposite when you do ripping. The blade's spinning this way, but you're going to be feeding the wood in this way. Let's compare that to, a, to the skill saw. The skill saw, same direction, this way. That this way. So that's normal. That's not opposite like it was for cross cutting. All right, I've repositioned the saw now to put it in the out rip position because it's a little bit easier to see for demo purposes. So let's say we were ripping this sheet of OSB. What I would do is I would position this, I would pos first I would position the blade slightly into the table, about a 32nd of an inch. Then, and that's, you do that with this crank handle down here. Then I would loosen up this clamp screw, this guard screw, excuse me, and take the nose of the guard right here and lower it down so it's just about an eighth of an inch or so above the piece that I'm cutting. Then I'd tighten this up to secure that guard in place. And I would take my workpiece, bring it back here, loosen up this ring nut, and lower this little assembly here. This thing is called a anti-kickback curve spreader. All right, I've zoomed in on the anti-kickback curve spreader assembly, so you can see that it has those two little pawls on this side and the wheel, and then on the other side are two other is exactly the same as that. What this wheel does is it's going to go into the kerf that's cut by the saw blade and that's going to keep the kerf spread so it doesn't pinch together. And what these little teeth are going to do is they're going to allow the wood to only slide in one direction. Only the way you're feeding it, not back out again. They're kind of like uh, the tire rippers that you see at parking garages. All right, I put the saw back into the in-rip position so you can see something a little more clearly. Remember, remember when we set the saw up for rip cutting, we first adjusted this nose of this guard so it was about an eighth of an inch above this piece of wood. And the reason you want to do that is, like I said before, the blade is spinning up from the table. So when this wood starts in here, it's going to want to lift up like that because the blade's going to be kicking it up. And that, that's what that's for. It stops that from being kicked up. Of course, you're going to be feeding it through and holding it down anyways, but if it does catch, you've got a guard there to keep it from lifting up. The other purpose of this guard, and especially this nose, is to prevent you from putting your hand into the blade. I mean, your hand's going to be over here, or if you're cutting something narrow, you're going to be using a push stick or a push board. But that's a protector to help guard from that. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about the hazards involved with ripping a piece of wood. It's something called kickback, and I've written down what I want to say so I get it right. Kickback is when the saw, under its own accord, ejects the stock from the table. Binding is the cause of kickback. Either the workpiece binds between the fence and the blade, or the blade is bound by a pinching kerf. Both cause the blade to grab the work and propel it suddenly, furiously, 
and without warning back toward the operator at a very high rate of speed. Saw blades spin at over 100 miles per hour, and as such, they can eject the piece with enough force to drive it through a plaster wall. You wouldn't want to be hit by that missile. Now, I've set the saw up again so you can see this blade cover, and it shows me the blades rotating this way. That's the same thing as this little car. The tires are rotating this way. Let's pretend that this wheel on this car is the blade on this saw. And this little piece of paper is the piece of wood that's being fed into the saw to be cut. So let's start up our makeshift radial arm saw here and see what happens when we touch the wheel, which is the same as touching the blade, to our piece of work here. If we look at a saw blade, you'll notice that the teeth on this, it's hard to see I'm sure, the teeth are a little bit wider than the body of the blade itself. And that allows this blade to spin freely when it goes through and cuts the wood and not eject it. However, if anything causes the workpiece to touch the back teeth of the blade here as it's coming out, it'll shoot it back. Now that could be caused by this fence being misaligned so that it's pinching the board as it comes in and then it'll hit these teeth, get caught and get kicked out. Or it could be that the blade's misaligned and it gets caught. Or it could be when I'm running it along the fence, the piece I'm cutting, that I push it or skew it a little bit and it catches. Anything that catches it on either side of this blade will eject it. Another thing that will cause the saw to kick wood back is when the kerf, this slit in the board that you've just cut, pinches. And that naturally wants to happen. The wood's coming out of your saw, and as it comes out, it starts to pinch. And that'll allow the blade to grab it and eject it. And that's what that little kerf spreader is for right here, this wheel, to keep that kerf open. And that's why it's important to always use that. Okay. Also, make sure that when whatever piece of wood that you're ripping has a completely flat, straight edge that will ride against this completely flat, straight fence. If you have a little cut or something like that, like I have on this one, that'll allow the wood to move away from the fence, allow the blade to grab it, and it'll be kicked back. And also, you don't want your wood to wobble. You want to have a nice flat bottom, too, when you're sliding the wood through. Okay, I have the saw set up here to do a bevel rip with it being in the in-rip position. And notice that that blade guard, or the blade itself, is tilted towards the fence. This saw only rotates in that direction. You can't rotate it the other way to make bevel cuts. So I don't suggest doing a bevel cut from this side because think about this, with that blade being beveled in at the top, leaning towards the fence, it's probably a little more likely to pinch the wood between the fence and the blade, which could result, of course, as we know, in a kickback. But let's look at it as we have it in the outrip position. Now I've changed the configuration around so that this saw is now in the outrip position. Of course, I've left the blade beveled. And I'm standing over on this side because you got, I'm trying to remind you that when you have it in the outrip, you got to feed this way against the direction the blade's spinning. But look at that. You've got a V going this way now so that your workpiece can kind of come up if it needs to. It's not going to get trapped down below. So to me, this is a safer way to do beveled ripping.